Welcome to the TV Music Network Podcast with Phyllis and Belinda. I'm Belinda. And I'm Phyllis. And today we're going to talk about the Daytime Emmys. Yeah, the Daytime Emmys, an event that we cover every year. Um, and it recognizes the best in daytime in all categories from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yes. Yeah. It was the 48th annual ceremony. Uh-huh. And it was back on the air on CBS. Yeah, on CBS, which is great. Yep, second year in a row. It's been renewed for the next year as well. Yep. Which is really good because there was a time, maybe a couple of years ago, not even a Yeah, when we ago, were searching for it on YouTube. When it wasn't on the air, you had to find it on, you know, a streaming site and everything right. else. And luckily, it's been restored. It's been there. It's on the Emmys last year. They did right. a telecast. That was all virtual, and um, some people yeah. loved it, some people didn't like it. I thought, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I'm like, happy pandemic, you got a ceremony at happy all. Happy there was a ceremony. Right. Let it go. Right. This year, it was a little bit of virtual and a little bit of half. Yeah, uh, half and half. Some people loved it, some people didn't. Category, the categories and speeches were pre-taped, and what was actual, people didn't know who the winner was, they pre-taped the speeches in case they won, and then it was a surprise to everyone, they added the winner in on the clip. So people didn't know who won, actually, until they aired last Friday. So we all found out at the same time. Right. And they did the same thing last year. Yeah. You sent in your tape Mm -hmm. from your house, and then you had to watch it. So people were having little parties and waiting to see what happened. Right. Which I I thought was cute and intimate, but I'm just happy that it was on the air... Um, it didn't do as well ratings wise, but part of it could be advertising. Part of it, I think, too, could be war- um, award show fatigue, as people call it. And also the mix of the virtual, not virtual, the carpet, all that stuff that people sometimes tend to watch for. Were the ratings better than last year? No. Okay. They were down okay. from last year um, by a great deal, but it was higher than. The previous ones. Well, you know what? You got to take what you can get. And I was just happy to have a ceremony that you could watch or whatever. What they did, in case you didn't know, they had the actors who were nominated that were in town or, you know, available available. to come down to the actual studio. uh, Come down to the the studio, do a red carpet, talk, do do a little press about their character, why they're nominated, everything else. And then they went inside to the auditorium. They, you know, sat backstage, they right. went through the categories, the presenters came out, they read the nominees, they read every single person, right. they read each winner, and mm-hmm. they came out and did a speech. So they taped the speech, they had a speech taped if you were there. If you weren't there, then you were able to submit a tape in right. advance, and then they showed that if they won, which we saw in a couple of uh-huh. weeks, we saw on. Right. So mainly ones who went down there, mainly all the soap opera actors, pretty right. much, everybody else, you know, the... The daytime, you know, game shows. Yeah, like game they shows, talk virtual. shows. That was pretty much all virtual. They were all virtual and um, all that, so. Right. so Cheryl, just, Cheryl yeah. Underwood was the host. Once again. Yeah, and she has hosted previously. I want to say this might be four times, five times for her um, oh, hosting. Many? I'm pretty sure. She did it twice, I think, with Mario Lopez. Oh, you're right. Time. I think her and Mario did do it then, twice. Then she did it once. With the other talk host. Just last year. Or maybe twice with the other talk host. No, they only did it once. Only once? I'm okay. pretty sure it was only And then once. one by herself. Yeah. So maybe it was only four times. Yeah. I don't know. But either way, it was kind of good to see a familiar face in the category. People are used to seeing her host. So it was good to have that. And it was good to have it on um, CBS, which was like the familiar one. Yeah, there's a couple things we'll talk about. Right. Should we talk about that after the winners? Sure, just the say the winners and, and get on to that. Let's go finish, then we'll winners. talk about the pearls and the cobs on the little show. And, yeah. like to see and what we'd like to see, yeah. If, if, you know, if things can happen. But like I said, I was quite happy that there was a show. Yeah, me I too. I know a lot of people weren't happy. Like, you take what you get, but you have to take what you can get in this situation. Yeah. Next year, in 2020. Well, it would be nice if people, people always say what they want in, negative, in a negative way sometimes or in a passionate way, depending on how you want to look at it. But if they would maybe take a survey, here was the last, you know, um, cere- Emmy ceremony. What would you like to see? What would you like? And whatever. Maybe if they did it that way, then maybe they could satisfy more people. But I don't know. All I know in 2020, everybody was in the house. 2020, people were allowed to come out. 
Yeah. 2022. Let's hope for a full You got to see some pretty sit dresses. Sit down with everybody there. A right. Red, a red carpet that happens that day. And a full audience of people. Yeah, I'm right. okay with that. And hopefully that'll happen. Baby steps. Gotta Baby steps. That. You gotta move along. You can't. Move well, along. Anyways, we kicked right off of the show. Cheryl came out. She told a couple little, you know, little funny things. Little you know, Cheryl jokes. Little Cheryl jokes. And they went right into the show. It was two hours long. Boom, let's go. Yeah. Started right with supporting actors in the drama like they're supposed to do. They went right. through it. They went through a thing. Uh, Marla Adams, the Young and the Restless, won. She uh -huh. won for the all-timer storyline. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. Dina. She's like the major yeah. arc of the Abbott family. She's the mother of... Um, Eileen Davidson's character, um, Beth Maitland's character. Cliff. Yeah. <laughs> Cliff. Well, he's Jack. I still call him Cliff. Yeah. All my children. Peter yeah. Bergman's character. She's a mother. And she's had storylines in the last two, three years this year. Yeah. This past year, her character passed away. Yeah. But she had the Alzheimer's storyline. She was losing her yeah. memory. And she was remembering the kids, and she had like good. She had a pretty good arc. Yeah. So, she, so yeah. So she sent her tape in. She was all excited. She had, well, she's won before. Yeah. Um, past years, and she was very excited. She thanked everyone. And um, what'd you think? Is that who you thought was going to win? Um, yeah, I thought she was going to win. I probably would have wouldn't have minded if it was another person, just to give some more, you know, some fresh blood, some more energy. I remember like last year. I'm just thinking in my head, off the top of my head, when Jason Thompson won for Best Actor. Yeah. It was very, it was exciting because it was like, his first one, he doesn't really, doesn't really win before. Sometimes when it's like, the same people get nominated over and over again, it can get a little, it can get a little boring. But, I was okay that's with that true, because you can't beat that storyline. That's true. I don't think she's been like, winning over and over again. And all that, but no, I, see, I but see what you mean. I mean no. those types of storylines. I do see what you mean. Those types of storylines. Right. People. Uh, Jason Thompson should have won for General Hospital, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, yeah, he should have won before now. Before now, but we're happy he did win, and he finally has his Emmy. Anyway, um, yeah, but I was okay with actor. that. Supporting actor was Matt Skip on General Hospital. We yeah, knew this was coming. You He's know. Mike Corbin. He was Sonny's dad again. An Alzheimer's storyline yeah. where. He was dealing with the, I mean, all of it. He went into a, a hospice, kind of hospital thing. He had his time with, like, each grandkid, each person that was, like, um, important to the show and important to him. And um, I thought he was great. And they brought on, it went on for, like, two weeks. I mean, well, the whole storyline. It went on forever. The storyline went on for three Well, the thing about the storyline was that he won in 2019. Right. For the beginning of this storyline. Yeah. So now it's the end of the storyline where he, you know, he passes away. Spoiler, well, spoiler. Well, if you listen to this podcast and you don't know, spoiler. Well, yeah. Um, the character passes away, and it went on for like a week in the hospital. It went on for like another week. And, and then, then there was the dream scene. Yeah, then he had the dream scenes. Then he had to imagine because he was going to miss um, Joss's graduation. So then they had that, and I couldn't really figure out why they were having it, it but forever. oh well. But it, but it, but it was but it was really good. Oh like, yeah, it was good. That, Scene they showed in the clip when they did when he was sitting there talking to Sonny, and um, oh, it was a baseball game. It was all it 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 it, it tags it. it. It's one of those. It oh yeah, it tags because everybody oh, yeah. knows someone or has this experience. I think it's where we relate to it. I think that's yeah. one of the reasons why. why it and it was great. I mean, he was great in the storyline, and he played really well off Maurice, and right. That's why he won. Then we could talk a little bit about that's the one category I thought that was like kind of stacked in a sense. Yeah. There were so many people in it. Um, Darren Brooks was nominated for White Bone and Beautiful. He had won before. He's won before. Brighton James was nominated for uh, Young and the Restless. He'd won before. Jeff Kober. My Jeff Kober. Who uh, plays Cyrus Renault in General Hospital. He had a lot of good stories. He had a lot of good stories. Jane Patrick Stewart had a lot of good stories. Yeah. He might get up next year. Yeah, for his. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I think next year he's probably going to For get his up kidnapping. Again. Brighton always gets up. Uh, Brighton right. won last year. Brighton always right. does a good job. But I, I think it was Max's year. I was happy that Darren did get nominated because a lot yeah. of times in that whole. Um, People Spencer get missed. Thing, he used to get some mess. Right. And, thing and all that. But that was good. Then we had informative um, talk show. Was Table talk with 
Yeah, that would kind of surprise me. Jada mm-hmm. tangled herself into an Emmy. You, you go, go, girl. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm telling all my business. Yeah. I better get me an Emmy, Emmy out yep. of it. Yeah. <laughs> this game show was Jeopardy. Yeah. And which we knew that was going to happen. Mike Richards. Was yeah. Mr. Was it was like a sentimental favorite. A Mm-hmm. Um, for the game show and talked about it. We knew it was in there. And Alex won as host. I think it would have won regardless and all that. One thing I do like, they had a little memory section where they would show memories of stuff that happened right. at the Emmys. And they had like, they showed Luke and Laura getting married, of course. Mm-hmm. Because that was, you know. Genius GH. You got your popular signs, Genius GH. Recognize. Anyway, um, Price is Right. They showed yeah. a vocal of Price is Right with Bob Barker. They showed Judge Judy. Her yeah, team. her they 25 showed, years. They showed Wayne Brady and a Les McAdeel clip. That was the first clip they showed before they went into commercial break. Then we had Outstanding Daytime Event. It was a space launch. Yeah. That, that, they went for that. And then right. we had um, TV show, Daytime TV show, and Kelly won. The girl Kelly Clarkson. Oh, I'm like, Kelly? That was really good. I thought you made Kelly uh, Ripa. I forgot. No. We have two Daytime Queens. That was really good. Kelly to see, Ripa, Kelly to see Clarkson, right? And the CBS Morning News one at UZ Wins. I've been watching it a couple times this year, taping it on Sunday morning. Oh, CBS and, uh, Sunday morning. Yeah. That's a difference. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There's CBS. CBS This Morning with Gil and the Tonys, and then there is the CBS Sunday Morning. Okay, but I wrote it down where I wrote CBS Morning News. Oh, so I don't I know. I hope that's the right category. Well, anyway, well, anyway. You get what I'm about. So congratulations to them. Performing um, actor... I don't like that they combined the categories. Yeah. What was this? Why did we combine the categories? Are we out you of know, people to nominate? <laughs> Are we short on Emmys? I don't understand I don't think why. we're out of people to nominate, but I know that this year, well, I shouldn't say this year, last year, the Academy changed up a lot of things. They combined a lot of categories. Like, for instance, there were some daytime categories like makeup, song, hair, all those. They combined it with other shows. It's not necessarily just daytime drama now. So, different shows can be nominated against each other and for each other. So, I don't know. I like that. But this one, I thought they probably could have um, not combined the category. Yeah, and it was like all girls and then TJ. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> So, what are you trying to say? It's all girls and Yeah, TJ, Taj Bello, who plays uh, TJ, TJ. Who comes on about four times a year. You yeah. Know, you see him about four times a year, and he although, was on, and... I although mean, now with... showed for him. Storyline-wise. Yeah. With, with um, Sean and Alexis, Molly and TJ's parents, both in jail. Yeah. Seems like they have a little bit more storyline this time, but... He's a good actor. Yeah, he's a good actor. He's yeah. a very good actor. Well, I think he's. Well, I think I've seen him more um, in the last couple, last month, and I seen him the whole year. I was like, okay, and then he had a, he had a real. Like, what did he do? I mean, you're funny. Him. And it was a scene I remembered because yeah. he has been on much. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, um, Victoria won from Victoria Conover won for Days of Our Lives. Play Sierra. Sierra Brady. I was very surprised she won. I was happy she won. Bone Hope's kid. Yeah. But I was, uh, but I was surprised. She was surprised. I was surprised. Was I was, uh, I yeah. was happy. What do you think? I think it's fine. I think she um, is a really great actress. Yeah, she's a great actress she, yeah. yeah, she stands out, and she's up against a lot of solid General Hospital people. Maybe she stood. Maybe she stood out. She had the storyline where her she had her wedding. They. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it got bombed yeah. for a while. She thought Ben had died for a while. He, She got kidnapped. I mean, the whole nine yards and stuff. So it could have been just like, and I I don't know for sure what they what they presented or what they um submitted at, for days, but I think it was the whole wedding of the ceremony. It has to be. That exactly. whole so entire see, thing, yeah. yeah. I thought um, little Trina in General Hospital did a really good job this past year. Oh, yes. Yeah, Sydney I thought Michaela. she did a good job. I thought maybe she might take it. I was a little bit sure. She had a lot you of know. good stuff, too. Yeah, she had a lot of material, but, you know, um, Victoria won. That was good. Mm-hmm. And then courtroom. Now, they had guest performer in a daytime series. Yeah, we haven't got to that. That one's combined, but, too. Yeah, I don't like that either. Should we just talk <laughs> about it now? I figured, it up? yeah, we'll just yeah. get all the... You're going out of the order from my list here. Um, oh, sorry. But, Let's go to your order. No, it's coming up. Lines of right I ain't now. got much to say, but Guess now. The performance of a drama was Katie McClain. Yeah. She was the second 
Yeah, they had two wins for Days of Our Lives. So she's yeah. the second winner. Right. She's on Days of Our Lives. She's playing Jennifer Horton. Yeah. And she, that was her third Emmy, playing three different characters you on go, three different girl. shows. I was like, you go, Katie. What do you think of her um, the work this year? And the guest performance, um, the nominees. Um, well, the nominees were, let's see, Kim Delaney was there. She's Jackie Templeton on General Hospital. On. She, that's why she, I guess it's five guest performance. Before. And you know what? I wish she's going to pop up, too. She's a shield. Yeah. Takes off. Not happy with the, the, with the way they've been timing her lately. Yeah. But that's just me. Then they had um, the girl who played um, Brooklyn, Ashton. Yeah. Brianna Lane. She was. She's Amanda's place on Amanda's on paternity. I thought she did a great yes. job. Yes. She did a really, really, really good job. job. Yeah. I might have had, would have liked her to win, but. You can't beat Katie McLean. No, I'm sorry. No, well, Katie's great. Yeah, and she's a good actress. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if um, she repeats or if she comes back because she's not on the show currently. Yeah, and like it'd be I said, interesting to see once if she again, comes back. Get back to two two awards. Uh, <laughs> courtroom um, was people's people's court. People still love the people's court. I used to watch yeah. it all the time. It's good to see that it's oh, still continuing. Oh, I've got some people's court it's stories. Good to yeah, see that it's still on. People are still watching it, and yeah. it won. <laughs> Directing with General Hospital. Yeah, and I, I could see that. Was, I thought it was good. I thought, I thought the past year, they had some very good directing scenes. Yeah. I thought it was a well-deserved nomination. And They've a had a lot win. of, like, one-off storyline-specific scenes, too, which I think made it good. They had the women's suffrage episode. They had what they said. Yeah, yes. the women's suffrage episode where... Um, Trina and Josh's characters that once it turned 18. Didn't watch. Why? I almost didn't watch it because it, came, it was like, it was, I shouldn't say out when it came on. It's like you watch during the week that they had that special episode. Usually during those little special episodes, I mean, like, oh, I'll just wait till the weekend and watch it. But I almost didn't watch it exactly, you know, the day it aired. And I did, and it was such a good episode. You know, it was really a good episode. Yeah, it was really timed it. pretty well, too, and I think that was part of the reason why yeah. um, they went for directing. But the show has been solid in directing for a while, and they always, they have to coordinate everything. They have stunts every year, yeah. and um, serious storylines, and then they have the other storylines. They have the general hospital, you know, the hospital scenes where they have an emergency, somebody shot, they have to wheel somebody. Yeah. It's a big thing, so yeah. And I, I say congratulations too, to them. Was the, was all the women in the episode? And I thought that was another reason why I was surprised too. But they did a really good job with yeah. the women's episode. Mm-hmm. The women took that; they took that out. It was great. <laughs> and they just repeated it not long ago too. Right. So they just repeated it right. I think the week of the Emmys. When that was even, uh, right, and it was time the with yeah. the you know 100th anniversary mm-hmm. of the women's suffrage. Yeah. They had all the characters there playing, you know, regular characters. Doing and themselves too when they flash back. Do we the talk show host? Talk show um host. It being Kelly Clarkson again. Kelly won. She ended her show ended winning three um daytime interviews. Yes, yeah, good for her. That's pretty good. So she won and I think people like Kelly because I think you can relate to her. Right. Usually when you watch sometimes you watch a talk show host, I won't name others just so I won't sound like it. And you're listening to them and they're talking about I haven't thought of time for the weekend and what I did. You really don't relate to them. You're, not You're kind of watching them or, yeah. you know, I had to fly this, this weekend. I was here or, you know, my husband came in on time. You're really, talking about Kelly. You know, Ripper. I didn't say any names. And you really can't but relate. But you're saying things that made me think you were talking about her. And you can't relate to that person or they're telling you how they were in their house and their gardener yeah, was coming up and yeah. doing this big house on TV and you're, you know, yeah, but the thing from too, home. I think one thing with Kelly, she just... Tell you are her business, you know, and yeah. certain and people, ways. Yeah. People relate to that. And I think, too, it's like people feel attached to her and connected to her because she was American Idol. Everybody voted for her. You've seen her career grow, 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 grow. And everybody feels like they've been responsible for it. So I like that. And I like the fact that her talk show won and she won as host as well. Mm-hmm. And... Um, after this next season, she's going to be like the main yeah. talk show person. She's going to take Ellen's time slot because Ellen DeGeneres is leaving. So it's pretty interesting. It's going to be good. Then they did a, a series of tributes. They did a special tribute to Alex Trebek. Yeah. They did a special tribute to Regis. And they did a special tribute to Larry um, King. Last right. year, Regis had just passed away. They did a little small little 
thing because he literally yeah passed away like the two days before the other day of the Emmys or the morning or something like that. Right, right, so right. So it was good to see like a little thing they had to yeah. really talk about. It was good to them. see it. I think um, I would have liked it a little bit more. They inter- they put them all together. I don't yeah. Know if do each one separate. They it kind of was interchanging it out. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they could have been a little, they could have done a little bit more, made it a little bit more lengthy, showed a little bit, a little bit more clips. I don't know what they could have done to make it a, a teeny bit better, but I did like it. Um, I also um, thought that when they did the memorial segment, they had um, Diamond White, who plays Paris Buckingham on Bold and the Beautiful. She wrote and sung a tribute song that they played during the segment, which I thought was a very beautiful idea, a very good thing. And it was tasteful. There wasn't a lot of focus and stuff, like, right on her when they were doing it. But, yeah, I liked it that, yeah, I liked that it was a song that kind of matched. Yeah. You know, it was a song that matched and everything else. Right. You saw her singing it, but she was singing it in between, you know, uh, like in between the music and she was like in one area. Right. And when you saw the pictures of the people, they were slow. You could yeah. see the people. You could read their names. It wasn't going so fast. The last major award show, I should say major award show, one of the, the major award shows, which was the Oscars, I think we talked about it. Where they had these names flying up so fast, or yeah, you know, names flying so you couldn't see them, and I'm just I know like, what's going on. And Quest Love they do is with playing the Grammys? like Stevie Wonder song that's all yeah, loud and blasting. And I'm like, what the hell? It's like it didn't match, and I right. the producers were like, well, we were trying to. I forgot what they said. We were trying to do. I don't know, but they effed it up. I don't know what they were gonna do, but people were complaining about talking. Then they left all these people out. It was yeah. like before they had members, they had members, and it isn't. So it gets a real sticky situation. Right. I know in the past I usually have something to say about the in memoriams and whatever else too, because you we watch them and it's kind of like everyone should be recognized and not forget. I know I like, yeah not forgot my rants. You know, well, been like my Grammy rant. <laughs> <laughs> My Grammy ran. Anyway, just, you know, I like they focused on the three of them and then they showed everybody else. Right. I was watching it. I thought, this is great. for being represented. And people that we saw on soap opera day. People right. People tomorrow but from, you know, the daytime world. And right. And everything was going great. I thought, this is really well done. You know, we, we, we got there. We did it. Right. We made it. We got it. Everything was fine. And then, you know, I thought everything was great. And then they put up the wrong picture. Yeah. They put the wrong picture up for the main you who's on Young and the Restless. Okay, they, yeah, there was two Mamies. We understand that. But did anyone check it? It's like, oh, and, and I hate to be critical yeah. of, like, the daytime Mamie show because it is a daytime and I'm happy it's there and I'm happy they put it on the air and everything else. But it's like, who checked it? Did they just assume? You know, yeah. You had the correct actress's name. But you had the wrong picture. The lady who passed away is still alive. What if, her, what if she's watching it, you know? What if her family's watching yeah. it? Yeah. What if, you know, the lady who passed away's family's watching it? And then the far part is like, they just didn't bother to search it. Like, they just typed it in, had the names, whatever it was too. But they got other names right. So, you know, it became a big stink on the internet. People went really in the town on it. And was going on, on, on about it. And the very next day, which was a weekend, the Emmys had to for an apology on Twitter and said, we apologize. Yeah, know. I mean, it was a mistake. Yeah, but usually, they don't, just usually, they, don't, and be usually done. they don't correct, they don't say anything, they just let it go away. Yeah. But they apologized to finish they were going to look for the correct license picture, and they were going to replace it on digital, you know, on the digital, um, when you go back and watch on Paramount Plus and everything else and all that. So, of course, you know, I will be going back to Paramount Plus and looking to see if it's been fixed. But, it was, that was, you know, that was, um, that was a big boo. And I was so happy that they had got that. I was like, wow, the memorial. I was right. like, God, I have nothing to complain about. And usually I'm always complaining about the memorial. Uh, I thought it was great with, the, great with the song, great with Diamond, great with the little tribute to, you know, the three guys. Unfortunately, there was a mistake. And then I just like it could have been a, a, little, a little bit longer. A little bit more focus on the guys. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, they all pitched. They didn't have seats. Some people like their scenes. Some people like there's just pictures. You know, I like when there's a picture, then it goes into a scene. And it was just pictures, and I was like, this can work, you know, as long as they're recognized, okay? Right. Um, and I didn't see many complaints of people not in it, and usually that happens. When people aren't in it, they let you know. Yeah. Someone. 
And then we went to another memory, and they showed Bone the Beautiful talking about them going back to work after the, um, they were the first soap opera back to work. They were the first production, from I COVID, think. COVID. Yeah. And they talked about them showing with dolls, and, you know, they were with the, man- <laughs> the mannequins. Yeah, and, how they were managing. And they had their real spouses on the set and all that to do all these scenes, and they did a little clip of that. Living a drama series with Studio City. Yeah. Yeah, I was happy for Chet, that. was great. I was very happy for him. That's it's show. a soap opera, um, I don't want to say spoof, but it's a, a show centered around a soap opera that's on Prime Video. And it's great. Sean Kanan, who was on, I don't know, almost every show. Yeah. General Hospital, Young and the Restless, Bold and the Beautiful. And it's a show that he executive produces he and stars days, in. Huh? Huh? Yeah, she must stay, huh? I think so. Yeah, I'm trying to think he was on. <laughs> anyway, uh, love you. Uh, love Sean. Well, Good one thing, too, if we talk about the digital daytime drama series, I feel like they've changed the name, changed yeah, the did. category a lot. And the ones they that... They call it a drama series. I'm like, aren't they all these digital yeah, series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are they changing the name? What's going on? Yeah. I don't know. But what I did like is... Um, they're usually they had um oh my god I can't remember what the who the nominees were the the bay was um I don't think ever after was this time darn I can't remember now which the show ones with Lauren Tilton Jacobs yes but I don't know the name of it and uh we're gonna look it up to see this and uh, check the show out but anyway um, yeah. game show host was Alice Trebek right and they Jeopardy. had a son and daughter there they came they accepted the war they're on the Set. Yeah, they were in that the set. They see. accepted virtually. Then they did another milestone. They showed a clip of Drew Barrymore. And that was one of the milestone clips. Uh-huh. Because she's in daytime now. And she was nominated. Yeah. It's about for her daytime talk show. When they did her little anniversary. And she was some people in her life and everything else. And I like that. that show. Yeah, I like that. I watched that episode. It was a good episode. Mm-hmm. And then the writing. Writing went to Young and the Restless. Yeah. For the year, I was very surprised. It may be because of the storyline. Yeah. With Marla. That's Bobby. Why they won. I was very surprised that the Tribune Hospital was going to win. Yeah. Um, I did. I definitely didn't want Bowden Beautiful to win. But I thought... Um, they haven't had a lot of good ones lately. Yeah, I thought General Hospital. But you know, why in our one, you know? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, non-fictional special. It was the Michelle Obama show. That, that thing that Michelle Obama was doing. What is that called? I don't know the correct name. I wrote Michelle Obama down. Probably not the good way to write it. But, <laughs> um, do you know what that is? Non-fiction special? I don't remember the name of it. It was a Netflix show that her and um, President Obama are executive producing. They have a deal with them. And it was all about educating girls, signing I apologize. I thought I had it with me, and of course I don't. All right, um, entertainment show. was entertaining tonight. Yay! (laughs) It's the main one I watch. It's really the only one I watch now. Yeah. Um, I did like the entertainment. Kevin Frazier, he was there, and I thought it was cute. Michelle. And Michelle Turner. I thought it was cute because it was the first time that they both were co-hosting together. And they seemed very excited, which they I thought there, was cute. They won, yeah. Yep. And an outstanding information talk show was Larry King. Uh, I really liked I really liked his, um, I liked all his shows after. I liked his shows, his son through my video. They accepted his, um, two of his sons through my video. They accepted his Emmy after that. Was kind of sentimental too. Right. Get the families up. I was like, oh, this is good. This is good. They're going for it. They're totally going for it. Then we got to lead actor in a drama. Here we go. Lead actor in a drama. Uh, that was a crazy category. It was. There were a lot of that people was a in it. Category. That was pretty. It was tough. That was a tough one. We had um, Jason, Steve. Okay, just on one Steve Burton. Steve Burton. Yeah. Jason. <laughs> okay, we had Steve Burton. We had Dom. Down Dante. with Zimpranya. And then we had um, Sonny, who... Um, Maurice Bernard, there? who plays Sonny. Maurice Bernard, was he as Sonny? Or was he as Sonny slash just Mike? <laughs> I think it was just Sonny. It was just Sonny, because he didn't come to be just Mike until... Yeah, he didn't have any problems yet. Cut off. Yeah, he didn't come to be Oh, my yet. God, okay, you were anyway. too much. Just want to make sure he was getting his proper due anyway. Yeah, I think he was just... Yeah, he was still Sonny. Yeah, because he didn't leave until after yet. Yeah, and he was dealing with his father's death. He was dealing with his father's death. Those are the three from General Hospital. Mm-hmm. Then we had TK in a sixth nomination. Torsten K. For Bone the Beautiful. Who plays Ridge. Who plays Ridge. And his storyline was him dealing with his daughter Steffi's 
accident and then her drug addiction. Yeah. And he was basically playing half these scenes with the mannequin, with the doll. Yeah. So, I mean, that was some, some acting. He's sitting there, you know, his seat crying over this doll. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, TK. Since time, since time to charm, let's do it. And then there was one more Can't quite actor. do it, yeah. And I gotta think who it is. Wally. It Wally was, it was Wally for Days of Our Lives. I yeah. forgot. Wally was, yeah, Wally was up for Days of Our Lives. And that was his storyline. It's funny how he goes back and forth between yeah. General Hospital well, and Days of Our Lives. I love it. Wally's storyline, as Justin featured the time jump, where they had, um, he lost his wife, Adrian, and he was grieving that and working on those, you know, working on that particular things, which I thought... Which is why he got recognized for that, I'm sure. Yeah. So I was thinking if the three general hospital may cancel each other out, they may not. They never know. But the minute next kill one, I'm like, Maurice is going to win for sure. Oh, yeah. Maurice did win. Yeah, Maurice won. He won for the, um, the son dealing with his dad's um, death. And like I said, it was a great storyline. Mm-hmm. It was a really great storyline. Maurice said it was hard for him to play the part. He didn't want to do it. Crying and carrying on, and then the scenes of the the scene when they went to the um when they went to the baseball game it was so cute. He oh. did the whole baseball game. God, I, I hated that. that episode. Why did you hate that episode? I don't know. Okay, okay. Was I just was too long for you. Is that what happened? It just went on too long. Yeah, it went on too long, and I just kind of felt like they had already made their point. Okay, Mike is not going to. You know, he's not going to make it. They, he has memories that he's going to forget and everyone is going to be hurtful when he doesn't remember something that they remember. And it's like, I understand the baseball game. Trust me, don't get me wrong. I understand the baseball game, but it seems like how many ways they went through every, every stage. Well, they're supposed to. Oh, uh, yeah, but they didn't have enough day. To me, there was enough daytime hours to devote to that many. Well, you know, they were going they could have cut it by three episodes or three hours, in yeah. my opinion. I feel like it was just too much. Then there was a really deep scene when he was talking with um, um, Elizabeth, and they were trying to decide whether he should let him go home, whether he should, you know, not do the thing, whether he mm-hmm. should, you know, let him And, you know, I love my girl Elizabeth. And all that, that that was a really good scene, and then when everybody was coming back, I thought it was a very well storyline. I thought it was really good. Um... I like how every other person on General Hospital storyline related to that. Yeah. Dante. Yeah. Storyline and the Cliff Day show, it seems like he submits the scenes when he came back from the funeral. Yeah. He came back, he walked in at the end of the funeral after everybody left and Sonny was there after Sunday. Sonny, I'm thinking, no, you should have been submitting the scenes when just you home, were away. Kinda. Yeah. And the whole, um, him having, you know, the head injuries and the, you know, all this being programmed. To me, that would have been a better scene for him. Yeah, I think I so. Know. But I think that, and I could be wrong, I'm just guessing here, that when they decide, like, who's going to win Emmys, who's going to win, they think there are more opportunities they can show you. Show you that another carry, or um, present those shows as themes. But they had two. They had the Mike is dying storyline, and then they had the one-off episode with the women's suffrage. So, I don't know. Everybody had to go right in there. Yeah, what was going on there. And but. then when they showed um, Steve's scenes as Jason... Mm-hmm. They have a scene going back to the sunny thing. I'm thinking, I can think of other scenes, you know, whatever, but that's just me and whatever, you know. I don't know. So, Maurice won. And what'd you think? I thought you it was. Surprised? Were you. Um... You know, I wasn't really surprised because those Alzheimer's storylines were very powerful. The Young and the Restless one and the, gen- and the General Hospital one, those scenes were very powerful. They were relatable. Everybody and Anthony Hopkins won. Yeah, everybody can can be late. Twenty twenty was a a rough year. A lot of people lost people. Um, You you knew somebody directly or indirectly who um, probably got sick this past year, and people had to cope with those losses and stuff. So I think that that helped with the episodes. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that he won. The thing that was interesting was that he won the year yeah. before as well. He won two years before yeah. 2019. And the Marla Adams, the she won. Beginning be- of that yeah, story she line. won before. 
when as did Rich, Max Gale. Which Max Gale, yeah. So they Excuse won the me. beginning of the storyline. They won for the end of the storyline. Yeah. And you know, well, the goes. The chairman came out and spoke and said a bunch of stuff at the, you know about you know the Emmys mm-hmm. and everything else. And then it was time for best actress, and there was three once again. Right. General Hospital people nominated. We had Nancy. Who um, had a really Alexis, good reel. Yeah, very, very good reel. And then we had um, Anna. Yeah. Um, Fenella Hughes. Playing Anna. Her, too. Oh, and she's played two characters. Yeah, actually. Anna yeah. and her twin she's sister, Alex. And her twin sister, Alex. So we had her. And then we Jeannie had... Jeannie Francis. Um, Jeannie Francis. Who killed a, that storyline, too. a real good storyline and the whole Nicholas coming back. Yeah. Um, but I wonder for hers if the Lulu. No, they sent scenes, Lulu to the. But that's not what they show her things. I'm thinking, did she submit the Lulu ones? Or did they submit? They probably submitted a couple of them. Because I thought, to me, that would have been a strong one. I don't know. Like I said, maybe they submitted them all. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember exactly what she said she submitted. But anyway, um, that was hers. And then we had. Melissa Claire Egan. Melissa Claire Egan, who did such a good job of. Like about a month ago, I think she's going to be one of the leads for next year. Yeah, and if she's not, and if she doesn't win, well, I have to see the other people. But well, we've said it before. I think yeah. she's already submitted hers this year. So good. I hope they get it ready. Like I already got my scene ready right. to go. Uh, the scene with her before she, you know, with uh, Victor going off and to the yeah before she went crazy. Before she went, you know, crazy in quotations. And um, I was going to say, yeah, quote unquote, yeah, quote unquote, crazy, Mr. Claire Egan. And then we had Jack, uh, that was her storyline. And then we had Melissa's well, storyline. Then we had Jackie McGinnis Woods, who was some steppy on board the beautiful. And right. her storyline was the, um, the drug storyline where she had an accident and she yeah. was recuperating. She, she accidentally got, got, addicted got addicted to, to opioids. Um, to opioids. Um, and when I saw her do the scenes for that, I was like, oh, she's going to be nominated for sure. She's yeah. probably going to win. With her intervention scenes where everyone on the show, people she had relationships with, antagonist relationships with, everyone confronted her about her having a problem, maybe she getting addicted, and maybe she needed to get some help. And she was refusing to get help. So with those scenes, they had... I don't know, it was a close of like three or four days or something when she was talking. It was the quickest drug dealing rehab so and so I've ever seen. It probably is probably because the rush oh, was God. pregnant. Maybe that's why I don't really know. She played off really well. She plays her best scenes. A lot of times I see her scenes and when she won two years ago. Okay, oh and to me they're a little early, over the top. She won. She won. They're a little over the top for me. I'm like, just calm yeah. down, relax. They're a little over the top when she won two years ago. I was like, okay. This time, I think she plays her best scenes with TK. Yeah, and Scott Clifton when they're doing those I'm going to leave you whatever scenes. Yeah, Because Scott's a strong actor. So I think it was um, the intervention scenes. She had one with her father, Ridge, played by Torsten K. TK. As well. And then um, Scott Clifton was there. Her ex-husband Liam, and then um, that Tyler Noblin, what's his name? Finn. Yes, who Finn, who was her current love interest or whatever, he was there, and so I think that that combination of all the three of those, and then opiate addiction is a very big problem this year. Yeah. So you had the social story, the social um, aspect story, and sometimes that that wins out because. The other um, storylines are good, but they're like the standard soap opera storylines. And this one wasn't as, I don't know. Yeah, but like I said, I think she played better with TK. Uh-huh. So watching her this time around, two years later, mm-hmm. I thought she did a really good job. Like I said, so, wasn't yeah. so what do you think? Two years before, this time I thought she, she did a really good job. I was, I, th- I said it last year, She's probably. I said it earlier this year, she's probably going to win for this yeah. storyline. So I think she was actually going to win. No, no, I didn't think she was going to win. I thought maybe Nancy was going to take it or maybe Jeannie was going to take it. I didn't think Melissa was. I didn't think um, Fanola. Fanola was. Some reason I kept thinking between those guys. I mean, Nancy's always great. I mean, Nancy, oh my Nancy God. does scenes that are just, I mean. She had a big storyline last year. Oh, God. So good. She's dealing with um, the alcoholic thing. Alcohol thing. Yeah, yeah she's she, dealing with um, and her scene was losing. Just the way um, it was her. 
emotions are. Losing Julian. The, yeah. And um, then the scene she showed where she told yeah. you to get away from her, but she's just dealing with her alcohol and just so, just so raw right. so real. I thought for sure she was probably going to take it. So I was surprised after when Jackie won, even though I had said months ago she's, she's going to win. She's probably going to win. And then she won. And um, she won, gave her speech. And the issue about that, too, was that last time she did all her scenes, she was um, having a baby. Yeah. Two years ago. And now this time, it's two years later. She's she, had another child. She was pregnant then, another yeah. time, too, and playing with the man again. And even she had said, too, on one on one of the carpet interviews that, you know, she, she thought playing um playing off with TK. Yeah. He's such a good actor and all that. I think that was the mm-hmm. strong point. So she won. That was the only award both of the beautiful um took home. Yeah. That was the only award they, they actually won was her uh, anyway, so I so I'm thinking the three girls can't sit to They could have easily that left Melissa and Jackie. Yeah. And but then it's best drama. Go ahead. One of the things I was gonna say about that too is they have just like a single vote now. When they do the nominees, yeah, I don't whoever, like that. whoever gets the most nominations is the most, you know, names written or most votes is oh, the one right. who wins. They that's don't right. do a second thing again. They don't do a second thing. Right. I think that could be so that that could be some of the reason why people won too. And not saying you that never know. disrespect any kind of right. actresses. Exactly. But there wasn't a chance for you to go back and re-vote after right. watching the Review reels. Review them, right. And watching the scenes. And I'm hoping they change that because I don't really know if I like that idea. Yeah, I don't know. Because you get six votes, you're not winning, but you're nominated. But right. then you can use that for the future. Yeah, the nomination nominated. works. You can get a better storyline, yeah. maybe. And then the last was the best drama. And all four soaps were up. Days of Our Lives, Get the Restless, Both the Beautiful, Junior Hospital, It's Only... Sadly, only four soap operas left. Yeah, um, you know, for that sense. Um, and General Hospital won. Right. I spent a General Hospital win. I'm s- guessing by the clip they showed that they should they submitted the woman episode. Yeah. And General Hospital, um, I love General Hospital. You know, it's one of the ones I make the point to watch. I mean, I watch all of them every day, but I'm like. You know, I can wait till later in the day, but I'm like, I need to watch General Hospital. Right. And years ago, I used to be General Hospital, Hospital. And then at one point, I don't know what happened. I just stopped watching it. Yeah. It and can be every once in a while. You get busy. So yeah, then you, you don't watch busy, it. And, and then, then you tape it. Right. And then you're going back and you're watching it back. And the same scenes are going on and on and on. And, and this whatever. past year, and that's we had why. a chance to watch. But one thing about... And I used to get mad at General Hospital sometimes and they would win. I like I go, they had one storyline for a week. And yeah. then that's the storyline submit and they would win, you know, whatever. But this year, I'm pretty sure it focused on the women's storyline, probably the you know, the all time right. thing. And to me they had some really good storylines. Yeah. Um, last year. And I like the What storylines. just think about I'm liking the storylines this they year. They talked about women's suffrage, they talked about the mob, the struggles and stuff with the mob. They did the dad you know, the dad show. Um, they also had the medicine show with, um, Finn. Then they had the alcohol with Alexis. They had, um... The bombing. Yeah, the bombing. They had race relations, because they talked about all that, too. So, I think... That's going to go more into this year, It was year a too. wide it's gonna go coverage more of shows. Into this year. So, General Hospital won. I thought for sure they were going to win. Um, I wasn't surprised when, and they, they, did. when yeah. they won. I think between the four soap operas watching what they did that past year like you said because we've had more time so it's right. time to watch them you know I think they deserve to win I know yeah. some people are different about some people didn't believe it you know I remember watching and thought well you know um, if you look overall who should have won so would right. you, you thought the same thing yeah I thought the they would have won mm-hmm. people seemed so shocked that General Hospital won I was like really no. every prediction I saw no one was guessing it no one was saying it I was like am I just thinking yeah, but people have their favorites and their favorite shows and their favorite characters and soaps, and that's how they probably. You're guide. talking about Twitter. I reaction. try to guide it by so you know, Twitter. Oh yeah, I try to guide by the show. You know, I have my favorite characters too, and I'm not, you know I'm mad sometimes my favorite character doesn't get nominated, or I'm, but I can see why. Right, they, and that's what's important because people get into you know, their own little mm-hmm. beast about whatever. So overall, what do you think of the show? Overall, I thought it was a good show. Um, I thought, and you're talking about just as a whole, right? As a whole, yeah. As the production and stuff of it. Okay, it was produced, I think, by the ATI. Yeah, Jim Romano. Yeah. Good job with that. 
Thank yeah, they did yeah. a really good job with it. <laughs> and it was a way, yes, thank you very much. Yeah. It was a way to like keep it on the air. I feel like they kept it fresh. Um if I had to give it a, you know, grade A B C D E, I'd probably give it a B minus. Mm -hmm. And my B minus is because of that virtual audience. Yeah. And I don't know if it was a CGI audience at some point. But they showed audience reaction shots, and you saw a bunch of, like, on-camera audience-related people sitting there clapping, doing um, little gestures and stuff to make you think that they were there. And the show that does that best with the CGI audience, or the, I call it CGI audience, but the fake audience bought in, is um, The Mass Singer. <laughs> no, one, no one does it better. Yeah. With that, and I wish that if they would have looked a little bit at some of that audience to see how how to get it, or can you show a clip of okay Heather Tom for example, she's there, she's a presenter, okay, pretend that she's gonna sit in the audience for a second when somebody's name gets called, or and then show a close up of exactly her um. You know, a close-up of her happening. To me, it just was like a projection. You go, who are all these people? Because I think a lot of people watch award shows, and I could be wrong. They watch award shows to see who's sitting in the audience. And what are they who somebody bought. Yeah, what are they wearing? Yeah. And I don't think you got that you didn't get it feeling all. at all but from I the show. But I thought they did. I know with the mass Singer, they had an audience go down, you know, in a van. Yeah, and they did so. They go down, and they're, and they're doing the claps. The reaction the shots, and the yeah. reaction, and they're playing music, right. playing songs, and you're doing you're doing all the reaction, and we're using it all season. Mm -hmm. it sounds like that might be what they did for this, yeah, because it looks like they were actually sitting in that audience. They may have had some sea fillers come down and sit there for yeah. an hour and tape it all the two. What they should Could have be. done, you should have had them all sit there. It was fine. Then you should have took the first five seats. Yeah. Empty. Yeah. And you have to sit there. And right. what I would have did because you had Jack Hay down there and you had Robert um Scott Wilson. Right. You had um Heather. Right. Down there. You had um Deidre. Yeah. Jackie. You was had there. um um Brighton and Bray. Right. You had so there was at least Yeah, there were there some was people at least there. Seven of them there. Yeah. Put them in the front row. Right. Or put them in the front row for a mm -hmm. few minutes. Have them sitting there, have them clapping, and then, then when somebody won, you could have showed them. And you could yeah. have said, like, okay, um, Heather and, um, oh, what's the guy that plays spin with there? Heather. Yeah. And, okay, you guys are there. You're just, okay, so the winner is, and you tape it. The winner, they yeah. have, the winner is Jackie McGinnis Wood. Then you show Heather and him going, yeah, yeah. that's their soul. They could have done that. Then you or, go, the winner is, um, G.D. Francis, and then you show, so yay for G.D. because those people have more of a reaction. Yeah, or I thought they could have done it the reality way one, where they go, coming up, we present best so-and-so, and then you see Rob, and you see Jack K doing a little wave, because oh, like the voice they're does. coming up. Yeah, like they do, you know, they do that. Coming up is so-and-so, so then that way you got the feeling that people were there. Yeah, then or, you had the five, all the five, all the actors were there. Yeah. They were all there. Sit them down. That's what I'm saying. Sit them down in the audience and then go, coming up next, who's going to win? And it's like, Jack and McGinnis Woods, and she's sitting in the audience. So and so, so and so. Yeah, you know, they could have. That might have been hard, though. Made it. No, they could have said, the camera could have been sitting there. We've yeah. seen tricks before. We've seen them put audiences in there. Yeah, that's true. We went to a taping, and they actually put an audience, audience in. Andrea. On the show, the day we were there, look what this is. We're us, giving away it? Hollywood magic. Yeah, but well, this is us. But that scene from the Super, the Super Bowl, Bowl that, that episode, was actually going on. That yeah. was going on was brilliant. Yeah, so I'm saying it would have made it look more real. But to see no one you know in the audience, and yeah, you know, was they weird. Know, they're just in there clapping. Then they had to be there with Cheryl because at one time they showed Cheryl walking. And you see them, and it wasn't like the clip they did, like when Matt oh, well, Gill won. Good. Yeah, audience take the click. You know, Matt Gill won. Yeah, there's no audience. Right. So they couldn't put them in there for a few minutes. Just I a don't couple, know. Okay. just a little bit. What about a clip of Sonny, Maurice, and Max sitting in those seats, like talking? Yeah. And then you put, okay, you know where they're sitting. We got Jackie here. We got so and so. We got so and so here. Yeah. No one would have because when she got to go back, stage, the seat fillers there. Yeah. No or one would have cared. Maybe repeat the scene that they showed. 
you know, the scene of um, their clip or, or something. They showed them on the red carpet. Like, yeah. Like, beginning. Never saw it again. Show a little clip of that. Well, yeah, show I don't know. Show them laughing and talking yeah. at the carpet. Yeah, seeing each other. So, why they show? Yeah, it's something I like think that. maybe, maybe COVID restrictions were a lot. But then again, like I said, yeah. we're saying that now, but there's 125 yeah. COVID r- rules. They probably don't want yeah. too many people sitting there. So, we know they're all bass and we know they're on the set. They could have mm-hmm. did it. They had them sitting in their pods yeah. of soaps. Right. Young Arrest's pod, General Hospital pod, Dave's pod, Bowl pod. Yeah. That's all you would have had to do. You yeah. have to sit them together. Put them in their pods, yeah, and then go from there. I think that would have worked out. Yeah, so that's that's one thing. Another thing for me, I felt was like the music. Mm-hmm. The music should have been more upbeat, more catchy, more significant. If to me, it just felt like royal royalty free classical music, yeah. whatever. And so I would have picked different music. And one thing that. I have to figure out, and I don't know how they're going to do this. I feel like they should have, they should not have left out all of the children's, all of the, all of the animated, all of yeah, we're still like, those in there. Because yeah. Sesame Street is so popular, everybody does pop, you know, Sesame Street. Get Kermit to come out and present. Get um one of them he to might ca- be come in a couple weeks. Yeah, I know, but it's, like, it's I'm not coming for the one. I'm but it's not on broadcast CBS. That's going to be online. Okay. I just feel like they they should have done something with the children's category or the lifestyle. That's true. What they call it now categories. I feel like they were underrepresented. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Basically, yeah. So anything else in the negative? Well, Any? I don't want to say negative. I want to say constructive. Constructive. I feel like also there was like some lifestyle categories Mm -hmm. that they could have done a little bit more with um, and the combined categories. I think I've mentioned this before, but I don't like so many combined categories Uh the way that they're doing them Um, where you have a soap opera that could be up against three or four Netflix shows now, like best music in a thing. There could be like, a music from a soap opera, and then two or three musics from Netflix, mm-hmm. from a Netflix show, and I think it's a different balance of budgets, mm-hmm. but I could be wrong. The only other thing, like, last year was when they first started, because it's always been so big, they have creative, and then they have, um, well, that's well, five days. yeah, but I feel like the creative, they have to find a way to put that creatives on TV. I don't know how they can do it. They can do it kind of like um, the primetime creatives. They show that on FX like the weekend before. They mm-hmm. have it the weekend before. I think they should just go back to the creatives. Mm-hmm. doesn't have to be on that Friday before. Mm-hmm. It could be, if that's going to be on a Friday night, maybe it's on the Friday a week before. Mm-hmm. So that way people can get time to like, I don't know, rest see it or something like that pre-tape that and put that somewhere Mm -hmm. or you take 15 minutes out um from this show but i think it's probably a solid two hours and try to find a way to get those categories in there recognized i feel like there it should be more cohesive and it's not Mm -hmm. that's my um other one and since it was pre-taped they could have done it yeah they could have done it easily limited you could have limited the um Yeah, so I mean, I would actually have ATI be the Emmys, um, Emmys. I don't know what you call it. The Emmys production company, the company that produces the Emmys permanently. Mm-hmm. So then that way they could, you know, learn and get more into it. One of my, you know, criticisms from the Oscars that they did this year was that they had brand new producers. Yeah. And you can't have brand new producers in a COVID, you know, whatever environment. You got to have somebody who knows what they're doing and you produce it. Or, and this might be too much work, hell, have one of the soap opera people, have Frank Valentini help produce it. Mm -hmm. He knows how to get, you know, things in and budget. Or have him as a consultant. I don't, I shouldn't be speaking out of turn because I don't really know how they do it. Because I thought ATI does a really, really good job. So I think that they should do it again. Mm-hmm. They should have Cheryl host one more time because it's going to be on CBS mm-hmm. again because they got the deal. And then get more time, find a way to get that. Ch- 
children's thing presented, or you just do outstanding children's show. Just do one of them. Yeah, just one. Small, just do one. Yeah, just bring do, out the, and bring them out. Yeah, maybe one in every category. Yeah. I don't know. If they decide to do the big carpet again next year, I think they should shrink it all down. It doesn't have to be that big. As proof. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Um, so we're doing constructive first, then we'll do positives. Um, constructive, oh, definitely. I did my positive. Oh, okay. So you did. Okay. So I I'll did it mine. all. So I'll do mine. Yeah. Constructive is definitely the audience, which we already, yeah. we already talked about. Uh, mine, the lack of the red carpet. You could have spent yeah. five minutes before just showing. People like to see. I think that's why a lot of people are A red wrong. carpet show. We're saying they were bored with it. Because right. it's kind of like boom, 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 boom. Let's show them the red carpet show. Yeah. Show them coming in. Show Victoria, you know, spinning with Rob and kicking her leg up. Show, you know, Jeannie and what you call it there. Show Jack A posing, you know. Yeah, they can do that. They they, in, or they, do it in between. In between as they go out to commercials. They can yeah. show them talking about their character, which they did. I submitted so-and-so, so-and-so because blah, blah, blah. You know, Melissa's right. a pregnant. There she, you know, if she is posing with um, Michelle. Michelle Stamper was there, you know. Right. Show that kind of thing. You can do it as they go out to yeah. break so people can feel more into it. Oh, and I also, sorry that I didn't mention this too. It doesn't have to be just the soap operas because there's other other categories and other people too. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, there is. So that's one I would say. Second one, um, the, the announcer. I don't know who yes. the announcer was. I meant to look up her name. She had some type of an accent. She sounded like Candace Cameron Bure to me. It sounded like she had a sort of an accent. I don't think she was with accents. She'd be funny who the announcer but was. But the announcer was pronouncing names all kind of crazy ways. It was kind of wrong. weird. It was kind of wrong. I'm like, was there not like a card that says, you can go places a card that goes so, so, so. And yeah. The presenters are, you're right. You're pronouncing these five names and you practice these names and you go to rehearsal. I don't know where that came from, but the names were kind of weird at one point. It was yeah. like one of things when she said, like, Deidre Hall and just... Yeah, and, you, and you're thinking Deidre Hall is a daytime staple. She's been on the show yeah. for how many years? You got plenty yeah. of time to learn how to pronounce you her name. That. If you learned any name, you should have learned her. You know, they were, <laughs> that was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, I that can was see a little that. bit weird too. And then they had a caption where Brittany from what Wayne Art's name was spelt wrong. And I'm thinking this show wasn't live. Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was live to tape. I mean, there was. Yeah, there was. It was live. Like so Cheryl was live, but they had a couple of weeks where they yeah, could have checked everything. To me, they had it. a week to check everything, double check, and you call it the three check. You check it and someone else checks it. Right. And then a third person the checks check. it. Because you're busy. You're running around. It's easy to make mistakes. Right. Easy you to spell miss this name. name out a thousand times. We've all done it. Lord knows I've done it. I feel like, oh, oh my God. So and so's name's wrong. You know, but if someone checks you, they're going through it fast because they're busy. But then you have a third checker is usually when it gets caught. Yeah. So like her name was spelled wrong. Just like little weird things. And it's like you had, this wasn't a live show. Yeah. That was one. And then I already went to the memorial, Mom. Um, blunder with that. I also think that the speeches, they were so short and they were so like kind of impersonal. It wasn't the actor's fault yeah. because they didn't know they won. Exactly. But I know Victoria gave a really good speech. She thanked, she thanked her dad and she said something, you know, in the middle of the you know, I thought she had a real hard speech. Everybody else was kind of like, I just want to thank so and so and so and so because you know, usually you get that, oh my god they're like, you know, like, right. just kind of walked out. Because yeah, that, the little bit of the, the excitement was, the was kind of taken out. Right. You're giving a speech that nobody may ever see. You're giving a speech and out of five of you, you have only a point. four of you aren't going to make it. So I think that would make the speech kind of taken away from it mm -hmm. and no other audience. And then I think without having like family or spouses there, kind of took away too because you're crying and caring. Yeah. And, you know, this is so and so. Your mom would have been there. That yeah. would have been nice. My mom yeah. Was watching at home. I love you, mom. And I think that kind of took away from it. Right. I can see so that. I think that's why people were saying stuff about it. And then, with there only being four soap operas now, I notice a lot. Everybody has like their one show. And then they watch the other one. But they have their one show. Right. And it seems like people were, you know, like, oh, so and so's going to win. Or so and so's going to sweep again. Or, you know, GH1. Yeah. Again. That's why it's so and so. Yeah. The spontaneity, the spontaneity out of all of it, it was, was kind of. Right. It's kind of missing. And then when you see a show like General House, one of the best soap, and you see the whole cast is running up there. So right. Like, now, here's the thing. They had a couple cast members there. You know, they couldn't have those three cast 
cast members up there like saying something. Oh, take it away, Frank. And then Frank comes on the TV and starts no. doing this little tape or whatever. That would have been a little bit more of a... Okay, there you go. Well, you had your pots. Do you do? Yeah. And the winner is General Oscar. There's uh, Maurice sitting there with Max. And there was a person with General Oscar. There was like just through the backstage reaction. The backstage reaction. Oh, my God, we did it. And then Frank comes down. There you go. Yeah. The two of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah just the backstage yeah. reaction. Just have it all right there. Yeah, Steve, um, Steve, Maurice. I'm so Yeah. Yay. Wait. You what? had six people there for General Hospital. Yeah, I know. All six of them could be like, yeah. Whoa, whoa, yeah it might have seemed fake, but I don't know. It wouldn't have seemed fake. And then you would have could have went into Frank on the take one. But, you know, they like, well, why do I win? And here comes the guy. On the, you know, it's like on the take was kind of hard. You know, that was a little bit in the... In the critiques. Yeah. On the positive side, I really like that they, it came on the air. Yeah. I really like that they had Gloria Stefan. Yes. And, you know, they had Kelly and Ryan. Uh-huh. So you got to see some different Yeah, J.D. P. Spitz was there. That were, you know, that were in daytime. Drew Barrymore. To kind of present awards that it wasn't just like the soap. Right. You don't watch soap operas. There's no need to watch daytime Emmys when there's other daytime shows like The Real and right. You know they it, so yeah. I like how they kind of incorporate that. It'd probably be a little more, but I think with the two hour time limit, they were probably doing this. Yeah. Again. Number two, I like that they showed clips. They showed yes. a clip. That's your favorite. Of every single thing you should not have an award show. <laughs> if you don't show clips. I and know. The biggest thing was the Oscars. You're trying to convince me this person's best actor, and you don't show me one clip. Yeah. So that was like, where are the clips? Like, I'm so confused. Oscar, yeah, they had issues. They showed clips. Number three. They were at a train I station, for God's like sake. I do also like that the in memoriam that I critiqued was showing all these people that the Oscars had left out. Like, they had just walked. Like they had, yeah. like, took the list that people complained about and made sure, yeah, they were on a soap because everyone's been on some soap. Right, right. Let's make sure they get in there. I was very surprised, though, that they didn't have Chadwick in the memoriam. Yeah, because Chadwick Boseman was he on was my chair, but I was right. very, very surprised that he was the only person. That was an oversight. That, that was definitely an oversight, and I don't think anybody mentioned it, maybe because they thought it wasn't in that year frame. Maybe. I thought that it was, you know? And I was just very, very shocked, surprised on that. Um, so I liked that for the positive. I liked that it was only two hours long. Yeah, I like that. They Although had, I could have had another like thirty minutes. Show the carpet. Yeah, the carpet. I like that the carpet was indoors. Everybody's showing outside in the sun. Everybody's all hot and everything else. I like that part of it too. Right. I like that that they at least had people there and not in their houses. Yes. No kids, no cats, no flowers, no messed up microphones. No cats. Everybody's there. Everyone right. Everyone was there. Right. Everybody put on long clothes. You got to get dressed up again. So I did like that. It yeah, that it wasn't a virtual, complete That it virtual wasn't a complete show. virtual a show. show. Yeah. I do think with technology that we should have been able to go live to them winning. You know, yeah. we should have been able with the technology there is today. They're all there. They all could have been there Friday night. Yeah. You could have set them in their pods. You could have showed no shots beforehand. You could have showed the close-ups, put them in their pods by shows. Yeah. And then when the presenter finishes, they sit in that pod with their show. Then they could have had the reaction. The person you would have had, and the winner is boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Because they all were there. And then Marla wins, and you go to the... Right. You go to her, and hers could have been a prepackaged video because she wasn't there. We have a video. If right. you're prepackaged. And it would have worked. Right. Because out of all the ones, they all were there. Everybody I, was pretty much there right. from the soap categories. If you had did that part, and then you still could have put and um, Entertainment Tonight, and you still right. could have put Kelly on tape, and you still could have put so-and-so on tape, I think the balance of it would have worked out yeah. better. And I know that I always use Kelly Clarkson as an example because mm -hmm. she's a big star. She's known around, yep. she's known around the world. It would have been so nice if they would have been able to get her there, have her come and have her present. She's in Cal, you know, she's in LA. You know, you're right. She could have come. She was in she California. She could have presented. She could have given away any of the categories, yep. and then she would have been there to accept her awards. I feel like with the daytime Emmys now, you're right. It's and Kelly there's so many. Yeah, other markets would have watched it. Yeah, I have friends who are like, oh, I don't watch soap operas right anymore. I'm not gonna watch. It. Yeah, they there's that the stereotype. Shows. Yeah, there's but a they, stereotype yeah. that it's all just the soap operas now. 
But if they would have got a big star to come and um, present, maybe even to host with Cheryl. I mean, I know that Kelly does a lot of other stuff. She did Billboard the last couple of yeah. years. She's got her talk show. She's got whatever. But they've got to get a bigger, a big star. That's a big part of daytime now to come and do these things. They got it. They have to. Okay. They should have had Shamar Moore down there. Yes. Shamar Moore should have hosted with Cheryl. Yeah, exactly. They would have been flirted, would have been funny. They would have been yeah. so-and-so. Shamar's a star. He's on SWAT. He's on CBS. He's a soap right, opera right. actor. He should have been on there. They should right. have had Susan Lucci present an award oh, from well, New York. Yeah. I don't care that she's not on the air anymore. What, to, pre- to honor Regis, to honor... Yeah, she could have like honored Larry Regis, King, yeah. Or she should have presented the... the, the, the I don't care if she's not there anymore. Yeah. The well, they had Drew Barrymore do it. The fact that's a Susan Lucci. The fact that's a soap opera staple that would have kept the legacy. Right. The legacy of it going. Everything else. A lot of our elders are gone now. That you yeah. Know, at these soaps and ever else too. I would have had her. Boom. And I would have had. I would have found him in Amsterdam, and I would have <laughs> had Tony Gary. Tony Gary. <laughs> Just because like, with your phone, tell yeah, you say Tony something. Gary. Or, or it could have been like, or they could like sag. When I first did my soap, but I would have yeah. heard him do that, Susan Lucci do that, Erica Salee Zach, or you know, Susan Flannery, someone yeah. like that. Well, Tim Zimmer, one of those guys. This is 48, so maybe, maybe we did okay, ATI, yeah, maybe do it for 50. We got two years. Yeah. And I think that would have been kind of something. And maybe yeah. that, maybe by that time, if the nighttime so Pine Valley that, yeah. you know, Kelly, Ripa and Mark and Swaler are going to do. If that's on, maybe it'll be a little tie yeah. or something like that. But I don't know. I just feel like they should have had, like, one more, just like one more big star. And the only one I can think about right now is Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Because I think that, because you kind of need, I mean, because, like I said, we're loyal. The daytime morning people are loyal. But right. I'm saying for the people, well, people were talking the feedback I read on Facebook and Twitter and you know Instagram, people like said they were they were bored with it, and they people watch soap operas. Right, they were like, oh, it's kind of bored. Yeah. Oh, and one know. last thing. And then people in the West Coast are like, oh, I'll just watch over the weekend because you know the winners are out and yeah, you, know, you read it, it's like Ugh, I want it to be. Oh, you know? How do you how do you feel about the night they had it on a Friday night? When they should it should have been on a Sunday night. I know it's hard to get Sunday real estate. It's hard to get you know Sunday time or maybe even Monday night. Do you how do you feel about it being on Friday? Friday. Because I feel like it could have been on Monday. I would have put it. I don't think I would have put it on Monday. I think I would have put it on Thursday night maybe. I was thinking Sunday, but the BT Awards were already scheduled for that Sunday. Yes. So that's already you know. Yes. Because uh, now they're all by the same. You know, they're all owned yeah. by Viacom. So that's probably why. I think yeah. a Sunday night would have been better for it. Or another night besides Friday. Oh, another Friday. night besides Friday. Because Friday night is go out night. It would be nice. So and so. And now it's like, we've been in the house for a year. It's Friday night. We're going yeah, out. Yeah, we ice. got out. Yeah, we're just got paid. We're just yeah. leaving the house. Right. We don't know where we're going. We're just yeah. going down to eat. Going yeah. to the drive through Right. To pick up something just to get out the house. So I think that would have been a, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I was just thinking about that. And one last thing I want your opinion on. It's now, it's. Feels like the show is half New York because of the talk shows there, and half LA because of the soap operas and the other production there. Do you think that there's a different way or another way to combine the two? Maybe next year. It said, it yeah. said to me it was just a little too hard, a little too risky. I'm sure they were just like, we're just trying to get past all the COVID things to get people down here to have a more of a show. Right. So they did the best they can. And let's tape it. Uh, people, you know, aren't happy with the pre-tape. It's like you tape a show because you're not used to war shows being pre-taped. And after last year watching all pre-taped, you know, it's like, but you ha- you just couldn't really take that chance. Yeah. Next year, we should be in better shape. We spent the whole car with the five-day so. plan. Because usually the, the creative Emmys and all those, they go on, it's three days. This yeah, like we, all day yeah, they need to make it before so it's you not. get to the Emmys. This yeah. Is like, they do the creatives on a Friday, and then, you know, the Emmys are on, um, do the creatives on a Friday before. Yeah. Do the creatives on that Friday before. It was Friday, Friday and the Emmys were on a Sunday. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't mean in but the we same used to weekend. Go Friday, then we used to go yeah, that's Sunday. too much. Yeah, Saturday off, but Saturday was gift launch day, and, you know. Yeah, I think that's, that's too much. Do two it days? the Friday. Yeah, do it two days. Do it that Friday before, and then that actual Friday. Oh, like the primetime Emmys at that time. Yes. Do it yeah, that way. Yeah, prime time music at that time. Yeah. 
So that's what I think. You know, yeah. anything else you no, I need to add? I'm, I'm sure there's something else. I probably am thinking of it. Yeah, I'm sure there's oh, something I forgot there any, too. I have one more thing. Oh, Lord. Just one more. Nominations. Were there anyone up there that didn't get nominated that you thought should have gotten nominated, that should have gotten nominated? Yeah. Let's see. I kind of resolved myself with... Um, because I have a major one. Okay, go. I have a major one, and I don't even like the character. What? Um, Thomas on Bowen the Beautiful. Yes. I don't even He like could have been in the supporting category. He could have even been in the lead category for as much airtime and stuff as he, he gets. He have been in the lead, although I, they probably would have put him in the supporting yeah. because of TK being in the lead. Yeah, he carried a Thomas, lot of Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, Bold and the Beautiful. I like that. I really like the character of Thomas. You know, yeah, take Matt, leave, Matt Atkinson. Matt Atkinson. The thing that's interesting. Ooh, he pissed off. <laughs> he, was on, soap opera land. he was on Young and the Restless for a little while. Playing the character before he came over to Bold as Thomas. The Thomas recast. But I feel like he did a lot of storyline. And yeah. I'm, I'm, miss, I'm mixing up his years. But when he fell in love with that mannequin. Yes. Girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he fell in love with the mannequin. Um... Oh God! I don't know when the Brooke mannequin. pushed him over the cliff and he fell, I looked it that up was to see before, the right? cut off. I looked up to see the cut off, and when I saw, of course, I thought, okay, he's gonna be next year. But when I went to the cut off, and I said, wait a minute, he should have been nominated. I'm like, you gotta be. How did he not get nominated? When I went through it and saw it, I was very, very surprised. I definitely think he should have got a nomination. Uh, like I said, I don't like the character. Maybe he didn't submit. I know a lot yeah. of times. I think Scott Clifton didn't submit himself. I feel like he could have been a nomination. A nominee. He could have taken it off. Yeah. He uh, well, he did apparently. Every other year. But I feel like he one year he just drives me crazy, and then one year he has a good storyline. Um, same thing with Heather Tom. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Heather Tom. Heather Tom has like one year it's that same storyline. Like they, she can play different roles. Heather Tom's an actor that can play other parts, and I keep that part when she gets down to the same thing. She can play other parts. She can write. That way. Um, I don't think Bold had a good year, which is probably why the only nomination was TK. Two or three people, yeah. It was, no, it was TK and um, TK, Jackie. And Jackie. And, and there was Darren, Darren and Courtney. And Courtney, because Courtney and that whole, <laughs> that whole crazy, she pretended to be sick. That was a good storyline. It was a good storyline. Her and Darren, they played off of that. Yeah, it was good for her. But when I looked it up, I thought, Matt, I should have got a nomination. Yeah. That was what I was like, very. Um, I was very surprised at. How about you? Yeah, I would agree with him. I think they should focus. I don't know. I feel like they could focus a little bit more on getting him some more attention. I don't know what the deal is. Who makes Maybe it? Who doesn't? Six. Yeah, he could have been number six. Yeah. Um, I thought that was fine. I also think. Um, I don't know. I'm. I can't think off of the top of my head. But there were some that I was like more interested in. Yeah. I don't know. He was one of them. He was one of my thought. Yeah, he was. He was the main one I thought of offhand, and I didn't think anything. I was like, oh, okay. Didn't think anything else. I was like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that he didn't? Um, and then another one I thought was um, uh, Becky Hurst. Yeah, but I think Hurst may have been the cutoff. Um, oh, you mean um, when Franco Becky, died? When Franco and... died. I think that's a cutoff. I thought she did a really good job. Yeah. I was surprised. Because they had a lot of people nominated for General Hospital. Yeah. General Hospital had Jordan. They had tons of people nominated on that show. Yeah. They had everybody Well, nominated. you know how I always feel like Mar- Mara West and my Ava Jerome. She always does good work. She could always be nominated yeah, for me. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't pick up Yeah, I was surprised she yeah, didn't either. Yeah, I was surprised because she usually keeps a nomination. I think that's pretty much. Yeah, she usually keeps one. So, yeah, I would agree with you. The Becky Hurst, um, the guy who Matt Atkinson, the guy who plays Thomas, I'm bold and beautiful. Yeah, I would agree yeah, with you. Yeah, there was a couple with one or two other people. I was like, wait a minute, what year was this? I didn't even think about it. And I thought, wait a minute, you know. Yeah, they're combining in with each other. Also, another one who I thought could have got a nomination, too, was little um, Olivia um, Rose Keegan. Because she played off that storyline with Sierra. Victoria, yeah, as the crazy one in the church. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought she could have. She really could I have. Thought she could have picked. Up, I would agree with that. She could have picked up one, you know, for for her because that's what she was. She was still on the show then, and that's part of that whole storyline. I think she could have picked up one, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure there's a, probably a, a couple more I can think of. Cassie's always good. Um, 
When she came back playing Can crazy on days, Cassie the Piper. Was that last, was this 20, 20 years ago? You know what, when was that? I, I don't think know. it's in that, oh, that may not be in that same cut. I don't think it okay, was. Okay, maybe it isn't. But anyway, um, that's the main ones I thought Yeah. Of. So that's where we're at. Daytime yeah. Emmys, they're coming back next year. I'll be happy for that. Hopefully COVID will be gone. We can all be in the audience. We can see Maybe there'll team. be a good a good year in daytime, too. Um, I'm really hoping that ATI produces it again. Thought they did a really great job. I hope um, we keep up with some good writing um, for the show. Like, yeah. Not just a couple weeks or four weeks out of the year or five weeks. Yeah. Like these storylines or that storylines. Hopefully they can keep some just... Because there's always going to be storylines you love, storylines you hate. If well, the storylines that General you know. Hospital has the whole, like, oh, Peter takedown. They have all of that for upcoming up for this, you know, year. The yeah, next year, the Cyrus Renault thing, I think, is going to be a big thing. He'll probably get yeah. a nomination for mm-hmm. that. So, I'm sure there's, like you said, there's storylines you're going to love, storylines you're going to hate. Hopefully there's more storylines you love and you right. hate. And whatever, and another daytime Emmys. Yeah, we may or may not be back when they get to creatives. Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, what happens when they get to creatives. But coming up in the um, a couple of weeks or so, we'll be not. They are they announced nominations for the other part of the. Yeah, I think they announced them. They did. July 18th. Oh, the creative Emmys. And they announced who won. Yeah, they're gonna announce who won. It's I think it's gonna be online and uh, yeah, something it's a digital like that ceremony. The, yeah, digital ceremony. That coming up, which we normally would carry it. Usually, like I said, this thing's like six, seven hours long. They, boom, see the two hours. Yeah. Like, boom, boom, boom. But what can you do? Anyway, um, fellas, where can we find you at? People can find me, actually, on Twitter, if they've got anything to say to me, at Phyllis underscore Thomas. Where can they find you? You can find me at Belinda's LA Music. I'm trying to figure out if Matt is going to get a nomination for <laughs> next year. Yes, and we're Belinda's LA Music. Team Matt. Team mad on that one. And like I said, I'm not even a big fan of the character. Yeah. I, but I think he got his due yeah. playing that part. But maybe when I go through the cutoff, maybe I'll see when some other stuff came up. He, I mean, he's right now, he's doing work that he can get for next year already. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just trying to get out that cage. Year, trying to get out that cage. And, and, and Aaron Spears is doing an excellent job. Maybe he can pick up <laughs> something too. You know, anyway. Yeah. Closing us out today, we have a song. It's a great song. It could be up for a best original song. Maybe we could try to sell it to a soap. Yeah. Band. It's by, it's called Eden. They don't need an original song. They just need a composition, right? Yeah. And it's by our friends, Dave and John. And that's what's closing us out today. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Oh, and thank you to anybody who's actually listening. Thank and, you very and much. still listening. <laughs> yeah. To our podcast. <laughs> yes, thanks. Goodbye. Bye.